So 5.1 was all about using the normal curve and finding probability. We talked about three methods, the 68959.7 rule, the z-score and using that chart to find probability, and also the normal curve function. So you have three different ways you could find probability. This next little piece is on be the central limit theorem. Now, this is kind of just an add-on to that. Everything we talked about, okay, all those problems was talking about what's the chance of pulling one individual? What's the chance of taking one item and having that probability of the value being above or below or in between certain uh, situations? Well, now the central limit theorem kind of breaks it down. Well, now we can look at more than just one individual at a time. We're going to be looking at sample means. Okay, so what's the chance that if we take a sample, that that average, that sample's on an average above this amount? Okay, so it's not looking at one individual now, it's looking at a sample of individuals, and we're gonna be looking at their average and seeing if it's above or below a certain value depending on our situation. Okay, so here's a problem we had before. Okay, uh, E Town Seniors, it was 87 seconds average and 13 seconds to run the 400 meters. Okay? And the problems we looked at, what's the chance of picking someone with a time of 84 seconds or less? It was picking someone, one person at a time. Okay? The new problems that we're going to look at here, okay, what's the chance of having a class of 20 students average a time of 84 seconds or less? It's still looking at 84 seconds or less, but now we're looking at a group of 20 students at a time. Okay? And with those 20 students, we're going to compare the average of that 20 students and see if the average is 84 seconds or less. So what I want you to think about now before we even move on any farther is just think about taking an average. What do you think that's going to do to our situation, to our probability? Do you think that's going to make it further from the, uh, from the actual parameter? Do you think it's going to be closer to the actual parameter? But what's an average do when we're taking a sample instead of looking at a single individual? Okay. When you are taking a sample, there's a chance you could use the central limit theorem. Okay? The central limit theorem for a sample mean says two things. Okay? It says that our mean stays the same. So that 87 seconds for our average, that's staying the same, that's still our center point. The standard deviation now, standard deviation is on change because we're not looking at just a single individual, we're looking at a sample. And that sample is going to make our answers a little more accurate, pull everything closer to the average. So the standard deviation is sigma divided by square root of n. So it's the standard deviation for the population divided by the square root of n, our sample size. And that's going to make our standard deviation a little smaller. We're breaking down the standard deviation dividing by it. Now, the central limit theorem has to have some conditions. So the conditions, the sample must be greater than, must be greater or equal to 30, or the distribution must be known to be normal, okay? So one of those two, if our condition, our distribution is normal, the second condition is satisfied, sample size doesn't matter. Could be greater, smaller than 30, that wouldn't matter. But if it's not normal, our sample must be at least 30. And the larger sample you take, the more and more closer to a normal distribution you're going to have. So you're gonna have to take multiple, multiple values and have that be a part of your sample if you wanna use the central limit theorem, okay? From here on out, we're just going to assume everything, every distribution we look at for these example is considered normal. Okay, so that means our conditions are satisfied and we can move on using the central limit theorem. Okay, so here's that situation again. Okay, what is the chance of picking someone with a time of 84 seconds? That one, someone, one person. And new question, what's the chance of having a class of 20 students average a time of 84 seconds or less? Okay, now. For the first part, I'm just going to use my normal CDF function. So if you remember, quick review, normal CDF, and I'm going to put in, we're looking at less than 84 seconds. Okay, so even let's draw the curve over here. There's our 84 seconds, and we're going down. So that 84 seconds is our upper bound. So I'm going to pick obnoxiously small number. 84 seconds is our upper bound, 87 and 13. Lower, upper, mu is our average, and sigma is our standard deviation. And to do that, our answer should be about 4.4087. 
Okay, so there's our probability or proportion for getting 84 seconds or less if you're selecting just one person. Now, we are looking at a sample of 20 people. I just told you we're going to assume the distribution is normal. Now, we have to calculate our new standard deviation. Okay, sigma divided by square root of n would be 13 divided by square root of 20. And I'm going to use 2. 0.91. If you want to plug that in, just to double check my work for that one. Okay, so that is the sigma we're going to use. That is our new standard deviation for the sample means. Okay, so if I'm going to do my normal CDF again, normal CDF, everything's going to be the same except for instead of 13, I'm plugging in 2.91. And this time, it drops down to 0.1513. Okay, so again, we have our lower, upper, mean, and standard deviation. But look how much smaller our average or our probability is now, 0.1513. And think about what's happening to our curve. Our standard deviation went from 13 to 2.91. Think how the curve would look. Now, our curve's on be much taller and skinnier. Everything's getting closer to that center. You know, I didn't measure anything out, but look at that green curve now. The shaded area got much smaller compared to what that area was. Okay, so it should make sense. Since we are looking for a probability far away from the average or away from the average, okay, and then we pulled the sample, shrunk the standard deviation, Everything got pulled closer to the average and away from the area we were looking for the probability of. So it should make sense that it's a little smaller. Okay. Let's look at another example. Okay. Another example we looked at, a person, uh, average person eats 32 wings during wing night. There is a standard deviation of three wings. Okay, so again, we're assuming this is a normal distribution, so we can use the central limit theorem if we need to. What's the probability of a random person eating 30 to 35 wings? And we're also going to look at what's the probability of a sample of 15 people eating an average of 30 to 35 wings. So it's important we start looking at, if we're looking at one person or multiple samples, if it's just a single person, we don't have to do anything to our standard deviation. Because if you think of the formula, 3 divided by square root of 1, it's just not going to give you 3 again. So there's no reason to do any calculations. Normal, CDF, we give in our lower and upper bound. Our average was 32, standard deviation of 3. Go ahead and label, lower, upper, mu, and sigma for our standard deviation. I'm going to draw my curve quickly. Again, I didn't measure anything. I just wanted to draw a quick little curve there so we can see the area we're looking for. And our average, or sorry, proportion for this one, okay, if you plug that in, I have it as 0.5889. Okay, so almost 60%, 0.5889, to get a single person that's on a heat between 30 and 35 wings. Okay, now for doing the sample of 15. We do have to calculate the new sigma this time. So we're looking at 3 divided by square root of 15. And that's going to give us the pro, uh, sorry, not probability, the standard deviation of 0.775. Okay, so there's the sigma we're using, 0.775. This formula is going to be the same. Normal CDF, we have 30, 35, 32 is our average, and 0.775. Lower, upper, mu, and sigma. So again, standard deviation is getting much smaller, going from 3 to 0.775, less than 1. I have an average, or sorry, a proportion of 0.995. Okay, so we're getting close to 100% in that, in that case now. And now let's think of what's happened to our curve again. Okay, there's our curve between 30 and 35 when we're looking for an individual. We're shrinking our standard deviation, or standard deviation is getting smaller, so this time things are getting close to the average. But in this situation, compared to last time, 
we're looking for a probability that's closer to our average, closer to the center. So if I draw my curve now with a smaller probability, or sorry, smaller standard deviation, my average is not moving. The 30 and 35 is not moving. That's a number line that's not stay right where it is. But now look at where the curve is. It's more centered around the average. And it's a much larger area there now. So now that should make sense how we're going from 58%, almost 59%, to 99.5%. Okay? Since we are looking for a probability closer to the average, standard deviation got smaller, so everything got closer to the average, okay? it makes sense the probability went up. Okay? So those are two examples of the central limit theorem. I feel like the pictures really demonstrates what's happening with the central limit theorem, with things getting closer and closer to the average. Okay? So the important thing is to think about the conditions, make sure they're satisfied. Make sure you think about are you looking for a single individual, single observational unit, or are you looking at a sample for those probabilities? And remember, don't overthink these. We did the normal curve functions before. Okay, Those methods are the same. Find the probability. That procedure is the same. So that's not changing. Okay, So that's a little add-on to 5.1, the central limit theorem.